afternoon, everyone. My name is Wong Hongxuan. Hi, everyone. My name is Wong Li Min. We are from the National Museum and the Founders Memorial of Singapore. We would like to thank ICOM Russia, Dinara Kalikova, for inviting us to present at this conference and Anna Mihailova for the arrangements. This afternoon, we would like to share about the Student Archivist Project, which won the Best Practice Award 2019 for ICOM Committee for Education and Cultural Action. So I'll start by talking about what the background of this project. So the Student Archivist Project was born out of the desire to help youth connect to Singapore history. With each passing year and the passing on of first-hand witnesses of important historical milestones, such as World War II in Singapore, there has been a growing sense of apathy and disconnect from Singapore's past among its younger generation. Therefore, as a lead up to the National Museum of Singapore's major exhibition entitled Witness to War, Remembering 1942, that opened in September 2017, youth ages 13 to 25 years were invited to join the museum in collecting memories of wartime survivors. Through the project, we hope to stir up their interest by enabling them to take ownership in the collecting and telling of history from first-hand eyewitnesses. So students were trained to interview war survivors starting from their own family, community and neighbourhood and six stories were eventually selected to be featured in the exhibition. The key objective was really to encourage intergenerational dialogue on Singapore's history and heritage. So what was the process and how did we start this project? We began through an open call uh, with secondary schools and tertiary institutions to invite students to be our student archivists. The project brief indicated the criteria for stories, the key being we wanted fresh stories and perspectives that were connected to our exhibition focus, which was responses to the fall of Singapore. We indicated that a selection will be featured in the exhibition and deposited at the National Archives of Singapore, whose mandate is to collect and preserve oral histories of Singapore. All students would receive a SAP search of participation whether or not their submissions were accepted by the archives. When students were unable to find a suitable interviewee, the museum stepped in to help by tapping on our networks of government agencies with strong alumni relations and also associations or care groups for seniors. The interviews could be conducted in any of the four official languages of Singapore and also Chinese dialects, which many seniors speak more fluently compared to Mandarin. Accepting a range of languages enables us to capture more and richer stories from the multicultural communities making up Singapore. At the end of the project, students are to submit their reflections and also a personal letter to their senior interviewee, which we encourage them to send to the interviewee. Many of these reflections and letters express gratitude towards the seniors for their generous sharing and an appreciation of Singapore's history and much improved conditions today. This year, we conducted the second run of the SAP with the intention of using selected interviews in the museum, as well as the upcoming Founders Memorial, which commemorates the values of independent Singapore's first generation leaders. In fact, we have just completed the professional reshoot of some interviews to be featured in the museum's upcoming exhibition titled Home Truly, Growing Up with Singapore, 1950s to the Present. The physical and digital exhibition explores significant experiences and moments that speak to the Singapore identity and will be launched on site later this year. While SAP 2020 has largely similar requirements and deliverables as SAP 2017, we focus on different themes this year, calling for stories on the impact of housing or industrialization policies between the 1950s and 1970s in Singapore, when Singapore was developing very rapidly on both fronts. We also chose these themes because of their alignment with the national history curriculum. 
this fit makes the SAP a useful and meaningful project for students and teachers who see its relevance to the classroom and can apply skills and knowledge learned to complete graded school assignments. This year's SAP was also special because of our collaboration with the Nanyang Technological University's graphic design module, faculty and students. As part of the module, students are to reach out to the community and draw inspiration from conversations to design a zine. The faculty members felt that the oral history interview skills taught in the SAP would equip their students to speak with members of the community. While um, for the museum team, we saw that the zines were potential displays alongside the oral history interviews and also anticipated working with profiles who would not usually sign up for a history related program otherwise. Therefore, the collaboration was very beneficial to both parties. Well, um, we conducted a three hour training session before students proceeded with their interviews to familiarize them with the historical themes, the exhibition content, and oral history interview techniques. As the ages of our participants range from 13 to the mid 20s, we use differentiated instruction for secondary and tertiary groups. As for the segment on training of the oral history interviews, we collaborated with the National Archives of Singapore, which has a dedicated team of oral historians. The training noted the to-dos and the not-to-dos when conducting an oral history interview and taught skills on how to broach sensitive and traumatic experiences, especially the subject of war in SAP 2017. Students were taught how to respect boundaries and to give sufficient space to interviewees if their accounts became too emotional. As students had to submit both recordings and transcripts, they were taught practical skills of how to record and transcribe interviews. In general, students gave the feedback that the training helped them to understand more about Singapore's history and to prepare for and conduct an oral history interview. So what were the considerations and challenges in terms of implementation? While the students shared how the interviewees struggled at times to recall details, or recounted events that did not seem to match historical facts or timelines, or at times were overcome with emotion during the interview. In addition, how did we select the interviews we featured in the exhibition? So out of the many submissions, there were seniors who had very interesting stories to share, but preferred not to be filmed or have their interviews displayed publicly. At the same time, there were also students who were not comfortable being filmed, or had difficulties presenting themselves well on camera. In addition, the museum also had to take care to represent a variety of seniors and students from different ethnicities and backgrounds so that the final videos would be relatable to diverse audiences. Students also found their training on how to exercise sensitivity and communicate with interviewees they were meeting for the first time put to the test as they faced their own anxieties and seniors who were not immediately forthcoming. One of the barriers was, of course, language. Many of the wartime survivors who were 80 years and above could not speak or understand English. However, the students were not deterred and sought the help of their parents and relatives, teachers, as well as volunteers within the Pioneer Generation Office and the Senior Activity Centers in their own neighborhoods to help with interpretation and translation. So this project was truly a community effort involving the school, the family, and the neighborhood. This year, the implementation of SAP was further put to test because of COVID-19, which made physical meetups difficult or totally impossible for a while. Due to the sudden announcement of escalated safe distancing measures, our scheduled mass training had to be canceled at short notice. We quickly offered to conduct small group trainings in the participating schools or to provide a training package with comprehensive notes and instructions for teachers to use with their students. This turned to our advantage as students commented that they enjoyed being in a smaller group as it was easier to ask questions and to get personalized feedback on their hands-on interview practice. 
Shortly after all the trainings were conducted, schools and workplaces across Singapore were all shut down to further restrict the spread of COVID. This meant that participants could no longer meet their interviewees face-to-face -face and had to reach out through video conferences or audio calls. They had to learn how to use these tools and also ensure that their elderly interviewees could assess these platforms as well, which could be rather difficult. But quite a number of schools managed to do that and submitted Zoom oral history interviews. Throughout the entire process, we granted several deadline extensions to make the project manageable for schools who were also juggling many other changes and challenges. We supported our participants in their use of technology and help with troubleshooting. Key to helping schools stay on board this project in these difficult times is to be flexible and to make things easier for participants and to have frequent communication to suggest solutions when needed. So what was the outcome and the impact of the project? For our first SAP in 2017, we had 120 students taking part and 50 uh, submissions. Some did group work, which was um, we thought was a very good response considering that this is a six month long project. For SAP 2020, we had fewer submissions, but around the same number of participants. Uh, unfortunately, uh, 25 students from five schools dropped out because of COVID. Qualitatively, we evaluated this program through the students' reflections, the quality of the oral history records that were collected, as well as the public's feedback and reflections on the selected stories that were presented in the exhibition. In terms of the impact on students, based on the student reflections, we would say that the SAP met its objectives by helping students better connect with Singapore's history by involving them in the recording, preserving and sharing of stories. Another objective met was that of offering students an opportunity to take charge of their own learning in every step of the process, from finding an interviewee to doing research, coming up with questions, conducting the interview and transcribing it. The preliminary and actual interviews amounted to a few hours and the rich sharing that took place brought about intergenerational bonding and also opened the students' eyes to values upheld by the elderly generation. Let us now share some excerpts from students' reflections that exhibit these learning points. So one of the reflections by 16-year-old Phoebe Tan, as you see here, described how she really valued her role and her, her agency in Madam Lau's memory recall, and particularly the opportunity to interact with these very witnesses of history, being able to ask the questions she wanted to ask and to share her own thoughts with the interviewee. Undergraduate Chelsea Teo came to understand the importance of framing questions well so that new stories which are in fact old memories, see the light of day. 15-year-old Daniel Tan found the dynamic nature of oral history interviews very challenging to react to, but he appreciated the personal and authentic accounts that were uncovered. Interestingly, he found that the value of adaptability, which he picked up through the process of conducting an oral history interview, to be precisely the value that was exemplified by Singapore's founding leaders in its history of industrialization. Next, like Phoebe, 21-year-old Charlene Tan reflected that her interview with Mr. David Leong not only enabled her to connect with the history of World War II and the Japanese occupation on a personal and emotional level, but also with the interviewee himself. What some historians such as Laura Jane Smith calls empathetic response on the part of the interviewee. For Brian Her, listening to the stories of the older generation helped him to better appreciate his living conditions today and to give thanks for the values of empathy and incorruptibility exhibited by Singapore's founding leaders. Perhaps what was most heartening and unexpected was how the project fostered intergenerational conversations between and among family members themselves, and in this case, between a boy and his grandfather. 
So 15-year-old D. Parathitaran from Riverside Secondary School decided to interview his own grandfather, Mr. Balasami, who was a 10-year-old boy when the war broke out in Singapore. Pirani shared that he felt nervous asking his grandpa the questions and in fact learned a lot from him that he didn't know before. So here we'd like to show you a snippet of the video interview. So, so as mentioned, it was really encouraging to see how the project opened up a channel of conversation between a student and his own grandpa, enabling him to see his grandpa in a new light. So from finding it somewhat boring to converse with grandpa, Parani became interested and even impressed with what he described as a unique experience his grandpa had, and also felt sorry for his grandpa's loss of his sister to the war. Post-project, post Parani also found himself conversing more regularly with his grandpa about his experiences beyond that of World War II. In his reflection, Pirani shared that he now understands why his grandpa often insists that he finishes all the food on his plate after experiencing near starvation during the war. Another participant, Renee, had a better understanding of her grandma in her youth, while her grandma enjoyed reliving her past experiences through the interview too. The SAP interview in their case offered a platform for sharing and bonding with much laughter. So the museum created this project primarily to engage youth and to spark intergenerational dialogue as we had shared. But wonderfully, it also had an impact on seniors in being able to share their stories with not only their student interviewee, interviewer, but also with the wider public, we observed a real sense of pride in the seniors as they showed friends and family members how their memories had been woven into the exhibition. Many um, at the opening of the exhibition took multiple photos with the displays of their stories and photographs. Several seniors also shared that they were happy and even grateful to be able to contribute to the understanding and safeguarding of this important memory of war. And so this demonstrates the potential of the Student Archivist Project to actively contribute to the museum's goal of engaging seniors. You know, the act of providing oral history or reminiscing has been argued to have benefits for older people in several ways, such as in terms of mental health and personalised provision of care. On this slide, um, this, we, we show you the image of the Witness to War exhibition 2017. And this shows that near the end of the exhibition where you see the display of portraits of seniors whose stories were featured in the, in the exhibition. Here, visitors were invited to reflect on the experience of the exhibition. And they were invited to respond through feedback cards that we then displayed on the feedback wall. Or visitors could choose to um, write a letter addressed to the, one of the survivors of the, of the war. So how did the public respond to this invitation? 
So the exhibition Witness to War was held from September 2017 to March 2018. And in that duration, we received over 1,500 letters and also close to 10,000 feedback cards. Well, now we show you now a selection of these feedback cards. We received many um, both writings and drawings in different languages such as English, Chinese, French, and also um, Japanese. And many of these responses expressed how the visitors were personally moved, especially by the stories of the survivors, and were thus inspired to both cherish and protect the peace they have. Several responses also came from young men who were serving the army. We need to show you the letters that visitors wrote to the survivors. We were very moved by them and after the exhibition ended, we, we hand delivered these letters to the survivors. So in the first um, e extract here, we see 19 year old national serviceman Max who wrote to Madam Sim saying that her tragic story of losing her father and then 10 months later, her mother to the war when she was only seven years old gave him a perspective to the challenges he was currently facing. For Isabella Chua's letter expressed how she was inspired by Niru Pamaduta, a volunteer nurse who shared how she could never forget the eyes of a 10-year-old girl who lay heavily injured in her arms and whose hospital ward was bombed the next day. So we were very heartened that many of these letters actually came from young people. The ways in which war or other events in history will continue to be remembered truly rests on the shoulders of the younger generation. And it's thus really important that any exhibition that interprets or commemorates these events need to resonate and be relevant for young people. Um, Liming and I would like to leave you with a quote that, I, that we think powerfully sums up why the museum embarked on this project and the impact the Student Archivist Project had in bringing people from different generations and social classes together in dialogue and greater understanding. In this case, it involves students as fellow workers and in the contact they make with the old to draw out their voices and stories, do their part to bring to the old a dignity and a self-confidence. So thank you very much for this opportunity to share and we look forward to the questions and the interaction with, with fellow colleagues. Thank you. Спасибо большое, коллеги. К сожалению, был сбой в трансляции и у меня исчез полностью чат. Я не вижу, есть ли вопросы в чате. Коллеги, здравствуйте. Dear Hon Suen and Limin, many thanks for joining us. Uh, so far, I don't see any questions on chat, but let uh, our participants uh, give let give them some time because perhaps they're thinking how to formulate those questions. Yelena, вопросов пока нет. Может быть, может быть, вот что-то появилось. Да, это комментарий. So it's not a question; it's a comment. Uh, that there are traditions and books about uh, mm, mm, memories about the World War II, and here we can see the contemporary uh, approach. So that's very good. Uh, our colleagues are very happy that they learn about your project. Uh, and we have one question: How these oral histories are presented within the exhibition? Um, so, in two ways, essentially for the Witness to War exhibition, we produce videos. So, we actually um, showed the interview that took place between the student and the war survivors. Um, and so, there were both videos and also just audio clips. So, so both, both the audio and the visual of it. 
Yeah, and as for this year's um, oral history interviews, we are also presenting it in the upcoming exhibition titled Home Truly. And uh, this time around, it is done as a video interview. And it is rather interesting because we have invited the interviewees to bring along their old photographs as well as um, their objects, uh, which we inserted as um, cutaways within the video. So uh, within the video, you'll be able to look at the old artifacts that these interviewees have kept. Um, uh, I have one more question about the way they are presented on the exhibition. So they, all these interviews are on one screen and you can select between them. Or there are several screens and they go one by one or visitors can choose which interview they would like to watch. And are there subtitles in uh, English or other languages? So how this is organized? And then I will translate your answer to our participants. Thanks very much, Anna. Yeah, uh, so as for the presentation, yes, there are English subtitles and um, this is especially important because some of the interviews are not conducted in English. Uh, so for instance, uh, we have uh, the, the recording that we played just now, it was um, conducted in Tamil, one of the four official languages in Singapore. And um, with a lot of our elderly interviewees, uh, they speak Chinese dialects. Yeah. So, um, and as for um, the way that we screen it, yeah, there are different um, screens and it is possible for the visitors to choose. А все эти э, истории, то есть интервью, записанные на видео, они показываются в формате видео с субтитрами и э, посетители могут выбирать, какое интервью посмотреть. То есть это не что-то зацикленное и идущее подряд, но э, получается есть возможность выбора. А интервью к проекту этого года про 50-60-е годы, интервью дополнены, то есть ролики смонтированы и включают в себя фотографии, какие-то памятные вещи, которые связаны с этими воспоминаниями. Коллеги, если есть еще вопросы, пожалуйста, не стесняйтесь их задать, я помогу с переводом. Очень здорово, что коллеги нашли возможность к нам подключиться, у них уже поздний вечер, поэтому, пожалуйста. Есть ли еще какие-то примеры таких проектов по привлечению широкой, широкого, широкого круга аудитории к деятельности музея? То есть вы имеете в виду не только... Студент. Такой интерактивный проект, да. интерактивный проект по привлечению аудитории к деятельности музея. Uh, and do you have any other projects which um, involve uh, uh, general public uh, so that they can uh, do something for the museum, some user-generated content? Um, you mean not not students in general, but yes, the, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. or other or other groups of general public, or maybe general public. Yeah. So, for instance, um, for in the recent COVID nineteen crisis, we've had um, we did an open call for members of the public to contribute their objects, photographs, or stories related to the experience of COVID nineteen. So the, some of these photographs will be displayed in two temporary exhibitions in the museum. And also the, the National Museum in general um, in curating exhibitions believes very strongly in co-creating content with the public. So whether it is in getting them to contribute material or in just um, having discussions with them on how stories should be told, or thirdly, just really putting their stories as quotes in the exhibition. So these are some ways we will we include audiences' perspectives in the exhibition. Thank you. And now I'm going to translate that. Значит, из последних проектов это сбор историй, предметов и фотографий, которые связаны с пандемией. И музей сейчас готовит две временные выставки, на которых эти предметы будут представлены. А в обычной повседневной работе публика в широком смысле привлекается для обсуждения будущих проектов и того, как истории 
да, жители в зависимости от темы могут быть представлены. Регулярно собираются какие-то истории и предметы, которые включаются в выставочное пространство. И, собственно, комментарии и истории, как тексты, как высказывания, тоже становятся частью выставок. То есть вот такая работа с местным сообществом, она является постоянной, на постоянной основе ведется. Коллеги, еще вопросы? So we are waiting for questions. Perhaps some, something that will appear. Uh, Аня, я не вижу чат. В чате пока ничего нет. Ну, тогда давайте поблагодарим коллег за то, что они э, откликнулись на наше предложение принять участие в работе вебинаров и нашли время, чтобы поучаствовать хотя бы поздний вечер mm -hmm. в Сингапуре. Желаем им дальнейших успехов. Окей, so uh, we don't have any more questions for you, and we are very grateful that you find time to join us. And uh, thank you again, and we're looking forward to keep our collaboration. So good luck with all your projects and stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank much. You very much. Other questions, we'll be happy to take them over email as well. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.